Hello everyone. So I don't know whether this episode is going to go up or not, but basically um, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the topology for this character. Uh, and in the next episode I will do, do UV mapping and I'll teach you how to do all that stuff. So first things first, I'm going to delete half of the character because we're going to be doing a lot of editing and detail work and I don't want to accidentally lose x-axis mirroring. So that means that I can just go ahead and add in x-axis mirroring. Turn on clipping. And you can see that we got the character back. And that's the best part about having uh, a loop, a continuous loop cut along the x-axis or along the zero line uh, is because you can just do that whenever you want. Let's start down here with the legs uh, and specifically the feet. You can see we've got very slender legs and that's no good. Um, this is supposed to be a space suit so we need bulky legs. But one of the weirdities you can see is that we've got these these dents in the inner uh, inner thigh area. So let's go ahead and clean those up a little bit just because we can see them more clearly now than we could before. Uh, we've got a lot of options as to how we want to do that but I'm just going to go ahead and bring them back in line like this for the moment <clears throat> and smooth things just a touch. So let's go ahead and do the feet. Uh, the feet were just sketches in the original um, and you can see that we've got it much too low. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these edge loops like this and like this. Uh, it's too much topology and we would be really crushed. It, you know, It would be really excessive to try and put the foot uh, have that much topology in the in the shin. Uh, the foot the foot is going to be uh, taking up that space. So uh, right now the foot is dramatically undersized. So let's go ahead and fix that by just dragging this down here. And then we're going to rotate it like so. And that gives us something similar to what we might want for the end profile of the heel. Uh, sorry, of the sole of the foot. Um, now this isn't actually uh, two layers, this is like one and a half layers, which you can see if I go here and turn on this, you can see it's not proper two layers, instead we've got like one layer and then a, a rounded center. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this rounded center and we're going to move it up, but we have to make sure that we just get the rounded center. We don't want to move all of those vertexes up, the vertices up. So just grab this one area, drag it up, drag over the side again, and you can see that we're floating off the ground. So Let's drag this back down to the ground and let's add in a new edge loop here uh, and scale Z0 and this is going to be I'll rotate like so, drag it up we can adjust these, this is going to be our sole so everything below this line is going to be sole and everything above this line is going to be boot pretty straightforward don't you think? So we need more boot. More boot. Boot is good. Boot. All right. So I'm going to turn on proportional editing. I didn't want to do this last time because it was going to break the x-axis mirror. But in this case, we don't need that. We we are actually mirroring it using a proper mirror, so we don't have to worry about that so much. Um, but you can see that we get this really awkward bump in the foot. So I'm going to not grab that. I'm going to grab it here instead. Yeah, that's a little bit better. There we go. This is more or less the right shape, except for the heel has this kind of weird shape to it. And that's because we had to do that to keep this uh, mesh topology clean. So we're going to take advantage of that clean mesh topology and just... Oop. I guess that is just the center loop, isn't it? Just take advantage of that clean topology and uh, I think O toggles it. No, it's not O. I, I can never remember what the shortcut key is for toggling that. But we're going to bring these in and then we're going to bring these back out. So we didn't actually need to move those, but that's okay. Whatever. You've got this lump here and this lump is actually problematic because it's hard for you to tell on the lower, uh, if you're on a lower uh, YouTube quality video, it's hard to tell, but we've got some crazy edge loops going on here. Um, we've got this edge loop, but we've also got this edge loop, and this edge loop, and this edge loop. Um, so actually it's not too bad. It looks a little bit awkward, but in the end, yeah, actually that topology is nice. Never mind. I take back what I said. I like it. But I don't like the bump. So let's go ahead and fix this bump. And the way to fix the bump is we can manually move it. Since uh, this video may or may not be going up, I'm not going to bother trying to cut out the sounds of the police siren. So I'm going to scale these up like so. 
There we go. And that gives us a decent boot looking type thing. But the boot is supposed to be quite bulky. As you can see, it's got something like space spats on it. So let's go ahead and create those space spats. Space spat, space spat. A lot of the awkwardness to that particular area is because we deleted some loop cuts and didn't bother to worry about it. Um, so we're we're not we're not exactly paying for that now, but we are having to adjust all of our all of our shapes now um, because those loop cuts gave us a buffer that we no longer have. Uh, so when it comes to space spats, we've got a couple of options. One option is that we can. Um, uh, adjust this so that it looks more like space bats and another option is we can extrude so that we have actual geometry. <clears throat> the foot is already very high po high poly count uh, for something like this. This is intended to be a mid to low poly model. Well not low poly but mid poly model. So we're gonna go ahead and take the option where we adjust the mesh so that it looks like spats. Um, and to do that we're actually going to have to add one more loop cut. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. And that would be right here. Now, we did add a lot more topology there, so maybe that wasn't the best idea. Hmm. Let's go ahead and try the extrusion. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. We're going to switch over to faces, and we're going to go ahead and select uh, some faces. This is going to disrupt our, our beautiful... Oh, wait, hold on. The foot isn't the correct width. All right, well, let's go ahead and adjust the width first. Oh wow, that's really not the right width. All right, so let's turn back on proportional editing. Um, connected. And let's grab some of these vertices and move them. Now this is supposed to be a fairly bulky set of boots. They're space boots. So we don't want to worry we don't have to worry about accidentally making our character's foot too bulky. Um, the foot, it's almost impossible for us to make it too bulky. It's going to be uh, just just fine at whatever whatever bulk we take it out to. So we're going to go ahead and really widen the foot. Um, there you are. Now this still doesn't look quite right, so let's pull this out some more, but lower the... Yeah, there we are. Something like this, and then this. Hmm. Oh, I don't have screencast keys on. I'll get I'll get that someday. I'll remember it someday. So you can see that we now have a foot that is the right width, but it's still pretty rocky. So we have a lot of options as to how to smooth this rockiness out, but I'm just going to go ahead and actually smooth it out. Like so. And that kind of brought us in quite a lot, so we need to drag all that back out like so. And then we're going to deselect that and then drag it out again like so. And we still don't have it very perfect, so let's just go back in and adjust these individually. All right, so now we've got a foot. But we still don't have any space spats, so let's go ahead and add those back in or add those in in the first place. So our space bats follow this kind of a pattern. So we're just going to grab all of this in a kind of awkward loop-ish sort of situation. But the problem is this isn't actually a loop cut. <coughs> we're not following any particular loop, uh, which is going to be a little bit problematic, but that's OK. Uh, we're going to go ahead and extrude, and just extrude some arbitrary amount using scale, like that and move it up a little bit. And right now all we need to do is massage this back into place. And the biggest thing we need to massage is up here. So we need to take this this is not a, for some reason this is not a loop. Whatever. We need to take this down and uh, and make it so that it is actually uh, part of the progression of the, of the leg rather than um, these spats don't don't bunch up around the ankle unless they're incorrectly worn. So 
we're not going to have it. I'm not going to have it do that because it's not being incorrectly worn. It's being perfectly fine worn. All right, now let's adjust this so that it looks a little bit more spat-like. And maybe we can move these back, like so. Yeah, that's fine. These can be moved back as well, like so. There we are, space spats. Let's move on up the leg now. Um, we've got some boot stuff going on, so... Uh, you notice I left a lot of extra topology down here in the leg, and I actually did that intentionally because I want to give it a look of being bunched up a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that before we do anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this down and then rotate it. Oh, no, I extruded it. I want to rotate it like so and the scale a little bit. And then, so when I said that they don't bunch up, I lied. Uh, these these ones will because. Uh, uh, we want them to look like boots, and that means I'm going to build actual wrinkles into the topology rather than trying to make them um, uh, rather than trying to make them uh, in in just the texture. Uh, the player will be seeing a lot of this character's feet if they wander around as this character, so they need to look decent. And you can see that the entire foot is tilted. So let's fix that. Go into this mode here. Grab all this stuff and this stuff. And just move it, Dunk. and and deselect that stuff, and deselect that stuff. Oh well, that's not too bad. We've got a kind of sinusoidal shape down here, but I don't think that really matters at the moment. I might fix it later, or maybe not. It hardly matters. Let's go ahead and add in the rest of the boot. So we've got this hem here that doesn't actually exist, but we're going to make it exist. Poof it exists. Uh, now to make it so that that hem actually has uh, solidity, we're going to drag this loop cut up and overlap it like this. And I, I really, this method I probably overuse it, this very simple method. Um, and I'm sure that there are people who are current, who are actually modelers going, hey, what are you doing? That's terrible. Um, and I'm sorry if that's true. Uh, I'm not a professional. I just develop stupid little indie games that don't end up ever going out on sale. And we'd have this really dense area of mesh here where we added in a loop back in the beginning to uh, create a better crotch and to add topology to the upper torso. But what it has also done is it's given us the density we need to do this vambrace thing, or vambrace thing, this um, add-on thing, this clip thing. So we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that. We're going to grab all of this stuff here. We're going to extrude it all out and scale it all down. Move it, move it. You've got to move it. Uh, let's massage these so that they no longer like this. Um, and you can notice that we don't have a very crisp edge on the back here. If we wanted a crisp edge, then what we've got to do is we've got to actually drag all of these out near the edge, like so. And that'll give us the crisp edge we need. Uh, it gives us a little bit of a blade shape here, so let's drag this and these. So we don't mind if it merges into the upper leg. In fact, that's uh, it was drawn with a sharp edge here, so let's actually, I lied, let's go ahead and delete these vertices and create that sharp edge that we want. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and I need to fill this in, so I'm going to extrude and then go to face uh, edge select and edge select I fill in this here and fill in this here and fill in this here and fill in this here so I just took away one of the one of the the, the pieces we extruded is now gone that's fine and to create a sharper edge we're gonna go ahead and bring both of these down and this is gonna distort the legs loop a little bit but that's fine There we are. It's nice and solid. I'm going to leave this divot here because I think it adds a little bit of personality to an otherwise uninteresting um, trivial detail. And we have a question as to whether or not we want to put one on the inside. I'm not going to bother, uh, but that looks roughly right. And we now we need to add some kneecaps. So we have these are the two um, 
uh, faces that are our knee, but I'm going to go ahead and also extrude from these two faces, and we're just going to add in some uh, some significant knee brace action, like so. And uh, the actual drawing doesn't have any details here, so I'm left to my own imaginings as to exactly what the shape of this should be and how it should merge into the left and right side of the leg, you know, here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's just a patch, like an armored patch in case she falls in a regolith, and so I'm going to leave it just like that. But I don't like the look of this leg. Um, she's coming off as having very, very slim legs, but she's supposed to be wearing something bulky, so even if in reality she was quite skinny, she would have more mass to her legs than this because of the 2 inch, 3 inch thick space suit. So I'm going to adjust all of this by turning on proportional editing again, like so. And I think the reason that she looks so skinny is because we never actually gave her a butt, um, which meant that I never actually worked on uh, putting the mass back in her legs. I just kind of said, we'll leave this for later, and then I never got around to it. But that's okay. Um, it's probably about time for it now. Uh, we don't actually need to add any topology here. Um, we just need to adjust it so that it looks right for a space suit, um, which basically means we're going to, well, come on, we're going to pull this down here, like so. Uh, and then back a little bit. And that'll give it a little bit of, of mass, uh, which is the sort of thing we're looking to do. So now we're up here at the hips, and the hips have this complicated system for interfacing with the backpack. So let's go ahead and build that. And we're going to use uh, all of this, like so. I think that that's yeah, that's all. We're going to leave this part up here for something else in a little bit. Uh, so we're going to extrude all of that stuff and then shrink it a little bit. Oop, turn off proportional editing. Shrink it a little bit. And let's bring it out and bring it up. Now the shape is all wrong. Um, so we have a couple of options as to how to fix the shape. Normally I would say, well, let's just drag this stuff around, but the base shape of the leg, I can't distort it that much. So I'm actually going to uh, go ahead, grab all this stuff again, and extrude again. And it's going to be this upper shape that I'm going to actually uh, make the primary um, object. So that means that we're going to distort here, which will leave the base leg intact. too much. That's more or less correct. It looks like these could use a little bit of x-axis. There we go, like so. So now we've got a shape that is roughly right. Let's drag these down and in. Um, these are too high. Let's drag them down. Too high. Drag them down and way off base. Drag it in and drag it down. Actually, those are supposed to be higher than I thought. Oh, because it's supposed to be interfacing with the backpack. Durr. So they need to have... needs to be backward sloping. Like so. Uh, now, there's gonna add, we're going to add a lot of details to this later on in the uh, texturing phase. So we're, go we're kind of fine with this, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to even out these um, uh, these faces just a little bit. They don't need to be compressed. Uh, of course, they are compressed all the way down the leg, which is a little bit annoying. And um, we can deal with that or we can leave it. It doesn't really matter at this point. So let's go ahead and interface with this backpack. And how do we do that, you might be asking. Well, we're just going to go ahead and merge it by deleting a face here and deleting a face here and then connecting them. So I'll go into line edit mode. Now there are tools to actually do uh, loop cut mergers. I'm not using them because this is just a one unit and it's not really worth it. Um, so now the backpack is connected and supported by her hip, which is fine. And we're going to go ahead and adjust this until it looks like it's roughly right. Now because this is a mechanical connection, which is like metal, uh, it's not. It's not just a cloth 
system, uh, we want it to look rigid and uh, and jointed rather than soft like a like a most backpacks have that cloth um, waist strap. This is the exact opposite of that. This is a heavy metal uh, strap. Yeah, like that. And uh, well, let's go ahead and add a loop cut here. And the reason for that is because I wanted to. Did I do that right? Yeah. I wanted to give it a sharp joint, which is hard to do with only uh, with that limited topology we had earlier. So drag this out, drag it up, um, like so. And then what we can do is we can drag this down. And that'll give us the sharpness we would like. Um, I may end up adding quite a lot of detail to this just because the player might often be looking from behind the pilot and this is something that really juts out. So let's go ahead and add in some details um, here to make it look like it's really, really connected. I'm going to do this. There we are. Uh, and we can add in uh, something like that. That'll give it a little bit of presence. Mm, this needs to be brought in and forward. There we are. That's basically what I wanted to see. All right. So the backpack, we have these placeholder bricks. Let's go ahead and delete them. Because what we actually want to do is have just a nozzle system where we can attach whatever happens to be on our back, which is normally going to be air canisters. Um, so let's go ahead and face. And then we'll go ahead and create a nozzle, which will just be, there we go. Quick and easy nozzle. Uh, so we don't actually want to make this backpack look um, smooth. I like the I like the angular look of the backpack, but it is floating too far away um, from her back at the moment. So let's go ahead and move these in. Uh, and we have some awkward topology back in here. So let's. Um, I was thinking about hiding her hole. Oh, here we are. So this is actually really awkward topology. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Let's go ahead and actually do what I was going to do and just hide vast amounts of her so that we can see what's going on. All right, so here we can see not very much. Let's hide this stuff too. Hide. 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 Oh, I hid too much. Hide. All right, there we are. So when we look at this, we can see that the inside of the backpack is rather tortured. Um, let's just drag this stuff so that it's not quite as awkward. But I was thinking about maybe actually changing the topology here. Um, there's some loop cuts that we don't need. So let's go ahead and delete this loop cut, this edge loop rather, and then we can adjust this stuff in like this. And we still have a very, very dense mesh in this area that we just don't need this level of density. Well, apparently something bad has happened because I haven't heard the police sirens stop in the past three hours, but that's okay. We'll keep going on. All right. So we've loosened up the mesh a little bit, um, and that ought to give us the uh, leeway we need to actually do some work. But these mesh pieces are pretty awkward still, so let's grab all of them and then scale Y, 0. And that'll give us a flat surface against the back. And drag it out a little bit. There we go. But we want that mechanical look we had before, and we kind of lost it when I deleted that uh, loop. So let's just go ahead and 
Extrude. Extruding is the solution to all of the world's problems. And then we're going to go ahead and extrude here and bring it in, scale it down. And that'll just give us a little bit of topology for the people in the back who are looking at it. We're also going to be seeing a lot of the back of this backpack, so let's go ahead and add in some complexity in this area, which we can do like so. And I'm just kind of extruding and changing things without any worry about whether or not the loops line up or any of that stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that empty so that we can write on it on the texture. There we go. So let's unhide everything. All right, so that's a lot of work done. It's just the arms left, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and not record that.